Okay, lesson today, transmissibility of forces. Um, this is a concept that when I first saw it, I was wondering why they were telling me this information. So a lot of the time if something's in a textbook, um, sometimes it's not very well explained, but it's a concept that you'll need to understand later on when you're trying to problem solve. So in the previous videos, we've talked about taking an inclined force and turning it into its vertical and its um, horizontal components. Um, we've talked about graphical and analytical solutions. Um, and each step of the way, like when we talked about breaking up components, we were then able to use that when we were doing an analytical solution of a multi-force problem. So each of these skills that you're learning, you will be applying. This idea of transmissibility of force uh, is basically uh, the idea that if you have an object and you apply a force, um, you can pull the object in the force. Let's say this is a mass, let's put it on wheels, okay? You can pull the object with a force or you can push the object with the same force, same magnitude. And for all intensive purposes, if we push it, okay, if we push it, or we, um, or we pull it, and we provide the same force, as long as it's acting along the same line of action, um, the object doesn't know any different. Push, pull, whatever. As long as it's along the same line of action, it's the same magnitude in the same direction, it's the same. Now, you might be asking why are we even talking about this? Well, later on we're going to be doing equilibrium problems, okay, where an object is um, stationary, it's not moving, and all the forces, vertical and horizontal, are equal to zero. All the moments, you don't know what a moment is yet, but we'll be talking about that later. But um, later we'll do um, questions like truss analysis problems, you know, where we're dealing with a truss bridge. It's a bridge made out of steel girders. It was very strong. You know, it's a pin and roller. Don't worry too much about, um, you know, if you don't understand what's going on here. But you'll be doing questions that involve all of this stuff and be working out forces applied, reactions that supports, all that sort of stuff. And it'll, it'll, it seems like quite complex now, but once you've learned all these little skills along the way and you apply them, it's not going to be an issue. But this transmissibility of force issue is such that um, you might be applying a force in this direction on this truss, um, and it might be pr producing a moment over here. So anywhere along this line, that force is being applied on the bridge, okay? It's being applied here, it's being applied here, it's being applied here, because all the way along that line of transmission is the same, okay? So you can start thinking, even though the force is being applied here, you can start thinking about it being also applied at this point, because it's on the same line of action. And when you do other problems that involve equilibrium, so say you've got a, a mass, okay? And um, you've got a gentleman standing over here and he's holding a rope and you've got an angle theta, okay? And the mass is not falling over, okay? Um, that situation involves this idea as well because you'll, um, what you'll do is you get the centre of gravity and you'll say that's your weight force acting straight down because weight always acts straight down. You'll be saying, well, we need three forces for this to be in equilibrium. We've only got two. Okay, so there must be another force somewhere. The way we do these problems, and we'll be doing these problems later, but I'm just explaining why we need to understand transmissibility. What we do is we take our, our line of weight and we extend it up because we're looking for the point of concurrence. Okay, we're at a point where two forces are meeting. And this is a tension force, okay, in the rope. Pulling this way, it's tension, okay? Gentleman's pulling that way, so we've got tension and we've got weight. Well, the third force, which is the reaction force, goes through that point of concurrence and it's going this way, okay? So 
you've got that whole idea of extending lines of um, action and that's where this transmissibility of force is comes in as well okay so this is why we're doing it so if you don't understand all of that don't worry but that's where it's going to be applied okay good so now we're just going to write down um, in simple terms what transmissibility of force is and later on when you encounter trust analysis or these equilibrium problems where we extend lines of force you'll know that we can extend the line of force because of transmissibility of forces okay so before we do that we might do a few reminders on vectors as well okay so um, a few reminders um, a few reminders a vector we know that force is a vector because it has um, direction and magnitude okay um, so a vector has four properties and they sometimes ask this in the multiple choice questions in the examination the ATC do you remember them so what are the four forces so uh, four properties of a vector I'm going to give you a force here and it's at 30 degrees from the horizontal okay and we're going to say what are the four properties of a vector pause write them down okay the four properties are value sense Direction and point of application. Okay, what does that all mean? Okay, well, value. I'm hoping you understand what that means. That's the magnitude of the force. Okay, so in this case, 10 newtons. Okay, pretty simple. Sense. Okay. That is the direction of the arrowhead. Okay, so in this in this instance, um, the arrowhead is on this side. The arrowhead could be on this side as well. Okay, so in, in that case, the sense would be opposite. Okay, so arrowhead on the vector. Direction. So this is where people sometimes get um, stumped. Okay, sense is the arrow either pointing this way or this way. Direction is the actual angle, okay? Because we could have a sense going this way, it would still be 30 degrees, wouldn't it? So the direction would be the same, 30 degrees, but the sense would be opposite. Think about it for a little while. Sense is the actual arrowhead, direction is the angle, okay? So it's 30 degrees in this case. And the point of application, okay? That is, in this instance, that little circle, okay? where the force is actually pulling or pushing. Okay, it's where it's being applied. They are the four characteristics of a vector, be it velocity, force, think of another vector. My brain's too slow. Okay, so now we can write down um, the principle of transmissibility of force. Um, I'm gonna rub out this, so I'll pause the video, and maybe get down those four properties of a vector and make sure you know them. Okay. Hi. How's it going? You're in Canon camera, I'll just let you know. Don't don't say anything rude or anything. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna read that out as well. Um, I wonder if we can zoom in. 
Yeah, we can. How's that, eh? Okay, so um, the principle of transmissibility of a force relates to the fact that a force may be relocated at any position along its line of action with the same magnitude and direction and sense and still have the same effect. Okay, so it's exactly what I was talking about and all of those words, the reason why I went back and introduced those concepts of a vector was because all of those words are introduced in the definition of transmissibility or force. Okay, sense, magnitude. Okay, so basically, in a nutshell, if I've got a wheelbarrow, or let's do it, um, let's do a lawnmower because that's the example that they use in the uh, textbook. Okay, there's our lawnmower. Oh, can't see it now because I've zoomed in too much, so I'll zoom back out again. Um, you've got a lawnmower. Okay, we can apply a force here, horizontal with that sense, or um, we could apply the same force as a pulling with that point of um, application. As long as we're going along the same line of action, we are going to have the same effect, okay, with either of those forces. So that is the concept of um, transmissibility of forces. Um, so how do we put that in a nutshell? Because that's a really long definition. Put simply, um, push or pull is the same, okay? Now it's the same, obviously, along a line of tran transmission transmission of the force okay so you will find later on that that concept you really need to understand that concept because when we're doing trust analysis and equilibrium problems where we're extending lines you might say well how, how do I get away with extending the line and not um, changing things well you can extend lines because there is that line of transmission and understanding that line of transmission is quite often necessary as well okay so that is line of transmissibility Hope that helps. Um, that was on um, in Copeland. I can't remember which page it was on, but uh, it's around the pages that we've been dealing with in the last few lessons. Um, see you next lesson.